Hello, in this video, we'll talk about microarray analysis. Microarray is a tool which can detect the expression of thousands of genes simultaneously. Microarrays are nothing but a slide which has specific DNA probes. So sometimes they are referred as gene chips. These slides are printed with thousands of tiny spots def at defined locations. Each spot contains known DNA sequence which corresponds to a particular gene and these act as a probe to detect gene expression. In this video, we'll talk about the application of microarray, how microarray works and the data analysis part. So stay tuned till the end of this video. In order to understand microarray, we first take some examples and then we would go to step-by-step -step analysis. Let's say we ask a question how neurons are different from epithelial cells in terms of gene expression. Or let's say we ask that how a normal cell differs from a cancer cell when it comes to transcriptome level. Or we ask that how a mature neuron is different from an immature neuron. All of these kind of questions can be answered using microarray by looking at the transcriptome uh, level. So let's talk about the overall applications of microarray. Microarray can be used for biomedical research, clinical diagnosis, pharmaceutical industry, or if even for phylogenetic analysis and studying evolution. Now let's get back to our question and try to understand microarray step by step. So we are trying to understand that how neurons are different from epithelial cells in terms of gene expression. Are there unique genes that are expressed by one cell but not the other? These are our question. So we first extract the total RNA from neurons and the epithelial cells. Then we prepare cDNA. But while preparing cDNA, these particular cDNA coming from neurons and epithelial cells are differentially labeled. Later on, we load those cDNA samples on these microarray chips and later on scan that with a microarray scanner. Ultimately, we analyze the differential expression pattern of these genes. So this is the overall workflow of microarray. So, the first step for microarray would be extracting the RNA. So first we perform cell lysis and then we run the lysate through an extraction column. In this column, the RNA molecules bind to the column material. Then we add elution buffer to this column. After adding the elution buffer, the RNA is eluted and this pure RNA is collected. This RNA would be converted to cDNA by performing a reverse transcriptase PCR. If you don't know what is reverse transcriptase PCR is, you can check it in the I button. Then ultimately, these cDNA samples are loaded on these microarray chips. Let me remind you that in these microarray chips, the cDNA which are loaded are differentially labeled. For simplicity, let us uh, imagine that the neurons give rise to these red labeled cDNA, whereas the cDNA of epithelial cells are green labeled. So these labels are fluorescent labels and this can be achieved by using fluorescently labeled nucleotides while synthesizing the DNA. So now we are zooming into one particular spot of these microarray chip. Now, whenever we add particular cDNA, this would hybridize to these portions of this spot. So, here we can understand for probes corresponding to gene A, samples that are coming from the neuron are hybridizing more compared to samples coming from the epithelia. And the scenario is different for the next spot. Now, all these spots are actually scanned and analyzed. Let us talk about three such spots. Here, this spot corresponds to gene X. 
here we can understand that gene X is expressed more in the neurons and uh, less in the epithelial cells. Whereas gene Y, if we imagine, it is expressed more in the epithelial cells and less in the neurons. That is why the spot looks green. Whereas a yellow spot represents the expression levels are kind of similar in between these two cell types. Now there are thousands of spots in this array. All of these spots are read by an automated scanner machine. And all these informations are added and analyzed further to extract the data. So the analysis involves making adjustment for systemic errors, including differences in intensities. Then the normalization of two color arrays is achieved by local regression. Further steps include background correction, scaling, as well as averaging the signals coming from duplicate spots. All of these things are achieved and ultimately a heat map is generated to represent the data. Here we can see the neuron and the epithelia are expressed in two cert certain columns in these heat map. And the sub columns represent the technical replicates or the biological replicates. In this case, these are biological replicates. So, and, and the right hand side represents several name of genes or probe IDs. Here, gene, I, gene A would be corresponding to a probe ID. And this is how we can understand or read the data. Here we can understand from the color key that this particular genes are upregulated in epithelia compared to the neuron. Whereas these set of genes are upregulated in neurons compared to epithelia. Now, once we have understanding of these basic aspects, we can further analyze signaling pathway using several bioinformatics tool. One thing we should always understand that whenever we perform a microarray analysis, the data has to be submitted into the gene expression omnibus server such that it is available to public and it is available to the researchers worldwide. So, in this video, we looked at microarray and let us try to understand the limitations of microarray. Though this technique appears to be very high throughput and cutting edge, but these days nobody really use microarray because RNA sequencing is cheaper and much more efficient in various aspects. In next video, we'll look at RNA sequencing as a replacement of microarray. So here are a few limitations. So the reliance upon existing knowledge about genomic sequence is a big disadvantage. High background level is a big problem. Limited dynamic range of detection can lead to saturation or background in the signals that could compromise the detection. Ultimately, comparing expression level across different experiments is often difficult and cumbersome. For all these limitations, microarray is kind of discontinued by the researchers worldwide. People now prefer analyzing the RNA sequencing data compared to microarray. So in this video, we talked about microarray, all the aspects about microarray. If you like this video, please support my channel in Patreon. If you are an Indian viewer, you can support my channel using Bhim UPI. By scanning this QR code, you can contribute a small amount to this channel and I really value that. Anyway, my courses are also present in Unacademy, which is India's largest online platform. So, if you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.